Hello and welcome to Springboard, your virtual university. My name is Albert Okran. Welcoming you on behalf of Team Springboard, ably led by Comfort. This is your most inspirational show and a point of convergence for the greatest minds. Your virtual university is brought to you by the Springboard Roadshow Foundation and the proudly sponsored by MTN Pulse Just B, the Enterprise Group Enterprise Your Advantage, UMB Bank, celebrating 50 years in banking with media support from the Multimedia Group and the Graphic Business Newspaper. Announcing our new partners, also the Central University, Ghana's premier private university. So today we get back into the engine room where many of you get to get a peek behind the scenes into the lives of frontline personnel in various fields, including arts, entertainment, education, media, corporate life, politics, governance, and everything in between, just to understand the joys, the tears, the pain, the tough decisions that you've had to make in the course of their journey, what you'll typically not find in any newspaper or anywhere else apart from Springboard, your virtual university. My guest for today is very special. I still have, a, I have shares in this story because it's very dear to my heart. He's a pathfinder because he walked out of his job corporate job in insurance to pursue what was in his heart, which at the time was not deemed to be something you could do full time as a corporate MC. Seven years later, he is the preferred choice and the one you will find hosting the highest profile events in this country for corporates, multinationals, the government, and every event that is big, sometimes not just locally, but also internationally. Let's unpack the story of my friend and my brother who runs a company called Domotale Africa, Jerry Edem Ajololo. Good to see you, Jerry. Rev, it's always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. And yeah. if I could do what you do without people here, I won't see you again. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's typical of you, but Jerry, it's, it's just beautiful to have to, today's conversation. And I dedicate this to everyone who believes in something that is not the regular... Exactly line of work and is is battling to even have the courage to step mm -hmm. out and do it sure today today it's normal to see you emceeing high profile events all over the place but let's go back to seven years ago and we'll go further back to your childhood but seven years ago okay. when you were taking this step were you afraid yes and no Yes, because naturally, I mean, stepping out of your comfort zone, something which gives you regular income security to start something which is not the regular, you would have little fears and apprehensions. However, I wasn't afraid because I had experience, I had work experience, I had qualification. I could easily come back into the life of work. I mean, you know, the regular eight to five. So I wasn't really afraid. The only fear was what if, you know, immediately... Uh, I don't uh, begin to sign deals and, you know, do events and stuff like that. But soon that was extinguished and the rest, they say, is history. What about the, the people you love? Because sometimes they fear for you more than you fear for yourself. You, you fear, but no, you have a I bit don't. of a reckless... I mean, all of us have a bit of, of some <laughs> risk-taking, reckless nature in us. But the people who love us are even more cautious mm -hmm. about us mm -hmm. and more protective of us. Exactly. How did your loved ones, your family, react to the decision? Not just to become a corporate job, sure. but to actually leave your, sure. your corporate job. Everybody, Rev, as a matter of fact, almost everybody said no. However, I spoke with a few people I deem, you know, within my close circle. My parents, my wife, you know, yourself and uh, Comfort. And most people felt that, look, it's just... A big risk which is unnecessary right now it will come in time just manage I was I was juggling it together with my 8 to 5 so they felt that look just let it run parallel to you know your 8 to 5 and then at the right time when you've amassed a lot and you can just fall on this maybe you can go into radio TV and still be doing this on the side but I felt the push my father told me something I'll never forget he says look you are a man you're married you have favor uh, you have convictions, and God certainly inspires those convictions. Take the step of faith. You have our blessing. And that's all I needed. My wife also was of that view that, look, she knows how I'm burdened by this passion. And to say that, look, I should suppress it for one year, two years, no. 
let me, I should just go all out. If it fails, it fails. If it succeeds, it succeeds. I came to you and as usual, you would not give me a yes or no. You would flesh out all the issues and clearly it just pointed to the fact that, look, we're not made to, to, to have the spirit of fear, you know, but of sound, of, of, of love and of sound mind. And basically that's the motivation with which I entered into. I was reading a report by the World Economic Forum that was trying to show jobs that exist today that didn't exist 10 years ago mm -hmm. as a way of saying that maybe 10 years from now the jobs that would also be be very prominent do not exist now exactly and the lesson from that for parents for loved ones mm -hmm. is that you are only guiding your child your loved one based on what you know it's true but what the world offers going exactly. for it you don't even know so now that it, 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 it is working, everybody everybody's saying, yeah, you are the man. But I'm sure that <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't that way seven years ago. To the extent that I go out of you know, the region to some remote part of town, president is commissioning something in BA or Kumasi, somewhere beyond, and a parent sees me and says, yeah, come, 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 come. He calls his son. This is the young man you've been seeing on TV doing all this thing. Look, I want you to mentor my son. He wants to go into media. He wants to go to radio TV. And I said, please, don't push him. Let him do what he's best suited to do. Allow, allow the boy. I'm not a journalist. I've never been on radio, never been on TV. But what I do, initially it was the preserve of radio and TV personalities. Today I've come to show that it is a different skill set. You, know, you don't have to be in media to possess the skill set. So I really agree with your point. Let's go back to your childhood. Yeah. Did you see any sign that you would live your life talking of course there was nothing like mc at the yeah. time but did you see early signs that you would go into a career that involved talking not at all were no, you a talker closer, were you shy I, I, were you I, what kind of child were you okay i was a normal child there was you know a light bulb moment i think nine i was nine then and my family had been through an experience and so we had to give a testimony in church quickly my mother said look i should you know do that i gave the testimony effortlessly like a child and it aroused, you know, so much interest and enthusiasm from everybody. The next Sunday, somebody brought me a New Testament Bible. The next Sunday, another person brought me cloth for trousers. And so I didn't take it seriously, but I did, everybody said, oh, you can speak well, this and that. But I never took it serious. Fast forward in junior high school and even secondary school, I used to present people's cases for them, like a pocket lawyer of sorts. So people would fall into trouble and they will come and say, oh, Jerry, this is what has happened. We know you are, you know, the preferred uh, this student of this master. Could you go and plead that case for us? And I'll go and just, you know, without any fear of, you know, the person's presence or anything, I'll just state the case as it is. And most of them say, hey, Charlie, Jerry, you're confused. And gradually growing up, I saw that I'm naturally, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm naturally disposed towards respectable people going before them, just speaking ordinarily. You know, but most people, hey, they always say, no, no, I can't do that. So with that in mind, really, I never even thought I would be, you know, a public speaker. The closest I thought I would be was to be a lawyer. When I see Isan Kumar, I said, this is my future. But, well, life happened and ah, I couldn't do law. <laughs> Have you ever told Ace this story? Not yet. <laughs> well, Ace is, Ace, I'm sure he's listening to the virtual university, so, so he knows that he, he was your target. So, the early 2000s, when I listened to Ace on Joy, I... Is, you know. When you're looking back and seeing, but, like, ah, but, but that wasn't me. You know, you know, you know. Interesting that you mentioned that being an MC is not the preserve of broadcast journalists, sure. but it has a unique set of skills. Mm -hmm. For anyone listening with aspirations to go into your field, what kind of skill does one need to be a good corporate MC? Mm. The first, I would call it brevity. The ability to speak intelligently in few words. Most people feel that being an MC, you should possess the ability to rattle, just say a lot of things. No, because most of the time, the people you're talking to, there are three people you talk to when you have a mic. Those who know more than you, those who know as much as you, and those who do not know very much. Mm. To talk to all three of them, you must communicate. You mustn't talk. And that's where brevity comes. You summarize everything very intelligently in few words, and everybody picks his own. Were you good in summary when you were in school? I tried. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. I tried. I tried. So tried. brevity is number one. Brevity is number one. Number two, humility. Okay. I always say all that you know is not all that is to know. 
all that is, you know is not all you should have known and all that you know shouldn't limit what you could know because some of the things that you say you think yes i mean this is it you go back and you realize that look mm. you made a fool of yourself and you must be humble to to be teachable because a lot of the people who would even make you a good mc they are not mcs themselves people i mean people call me to the side and give me a whole lesson on how to say this i mean the the, the you know uh, historical background to this uh, and you watch the person giving you all of this and say, ah, so why aren't you an MC? But well, that's how God has defined it. So you must just be humble and acknowledge those people who possess knowledge, do not necessarily practice, but can also help you. So for me, brevity, humility. Number three, I believe it flows from humility, respect. A lot of my predecessors have had that bad tag, you know, on them as talking down on the audience especially in the area that I play, because they seem to possess a lot of knowledge. So upon just taking the mic, they want everybody to know that they know. And, you know, they are, they, they are, they are quite condescending sometimes. You find, excuse me to say, a journalist who most of the time, because of the nature of his work, has to do extensive research. and come. But the thing is, you are a journalist. You are not a practitioner of, in any field. You talk, today you're talking about mining, the next time you're talking about finance. But when you come into a finance-related program, you try to sound as if you are. And most of the time, it comes off as a bit disrespectful. So most people have complained about that, and I try not to go down that path. So for me, brevity, humility, respect. Number four, an insatiable appetite to learn. An insatiable appetite to learn. I mean, for this job, things change every day. The same skill set you had in the beginning is not the same skill set you need for the journey. I mean, uh, I, what I try to do is that after every event, I create a docket of sorts. So I have a big envelope for every event. I file everything that I researched on and then just seal it. When it's time for a similar event, I just pull it out and then do additional research to it. And then, so things change. The old stuff that I had maybe 2017, today, Further and better particulars, as Dr. Bawinia would say, have also emerged. So what do you do? You add that, and then you're good to go. So for me, these four things are very cardinal when it comes to, you know, being an effective MC. Interesting that you mentioned a fifth one so, so passively, but that fifth one is, for me, a very, very important one. I, did, I, I probably add it as a fifth okay. skill you must have, a docket on, on, on jobs you've done so that you can improve on exactly. them and not have to go back to ground zero. If you just join us, this is Springboard, your virtual university, and my guest for today, Jerry Edem Ajalulu, the number one MC in this country. And we are talking about anybody de de desiring to pursue a career that you may not have thought about in your childhood and you may probably be facing genuine objections from people who care about you, trying to say there's something else you could do that is more regular and more predictable. And this show is dedicated entirely to you and hoping that you would learn some lessons about how to bring those people along, how to convince yourself, how to even venture into it step by step, and all the lessons that can help you to do it without any fear because somebody has done it, has taken all the bruises and brought you some lessons for your own application. So, so far we've been talking about um, first income security sure. and the fact that you had to walk away, not entirely afraid because you knew you had a doorway to come exactly. back, but also encouraged by those around you. You mentioned growing up and being a regular child until that testimony at age nine. That brought you trouser material ah. and the New Testament. <laughs> I love that one. <laughs> <laughs> and then the third one is corporate MC skills. You've sure. given us four, brevity, humility, respect, and the, the fourth one is one of my favorites, an yeah. insatiable appetite yeah. to learn, and of yeah. course, the ability to file yeah. the docket on each case yeah. and come back to it. In the course of your work, I'm sure that you didn't have all these jobs flooding at you from sure. day one. You may have started with a bit of a stutter and then picked mm -hmm. up as you went along. Mm -hmm. Would you spot any turning point where it almost like was almost like from there, the world paid more attention to you? I'm curious about that turning point. <laughs> As a matter of fact, there are two. The mm. first one was December 2014. It was the MTN carols, mm. the night of MTN, you know, uh, carols. That was, uh, you know, a turning point. But it was bigger in August of 2015. I happened to host the president for the first time, then President Mahama. It was a tomato factory that they were opening, commissioning at Tema. 
I recall that day so vividly because, I mean, my big brother, Stan Lugwe, came to the event and was, you know, asked, he came and, who is the MC? So I showed up. I introduced myself. He said, which radio station with you? I said, no. None, I said, ah, none of that what do you do? And I said, insurance. Insurance? Where's the event organizer? Eh? So the event organizer came and he asked, who is this guy? I said, oh, he's the guy who can do this and that. Come, 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 come. Let me see you go this and that. Look, the president doesn't have time. We're doing this in 45 minutes. This and that. Cut this, cut that. This and... So I said, yes, sir. And then we went on. Uh, Charles Mensah was there. So I did it to the best of my ability. We finished everything. Then when he was leaving, come, 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 come. Ah, what? MC, insurance, no radio, no TV. Ah, give me your card. <laughs> you, you talk, I'm just imagining Stan talking just like this, but you know what? And that, it. And, and that was the turning point for me. Two days after he called me, there was something happening at Jubilee. And Stan would usually not call, he would text you, I mean, and that's it. And really that opened the doors to all the presidential events. Through that, I got to host the president of Turkey, I got to host the president of India, the prime minister of Ethiopia. I mean, it, it just, it just, you know, started like that. You know, so that was one important turning point. So there was a December 2022 MTN exactly. night, and then there exactly. was a tomato factory. I'm not listening to tomato factory. <laughs> commission. <laughs> you wouldn't think of that one as the day, the day the Lord has made. And you know, you know, interestingly, it wasn't, no, it wasn't August. It was June because I was still in my um, active employment. It was Ju Ju July that I left completely. So it was my last month and I was doing my sales, you know, rounds in Accra when I had a call from a big sister, you know, she's now Reverend Hedwig Quist. She used to be at Chatter, Chatter House, yeah. yes. So she called me that there was this kid. And I remember we're arguing. I said, no, the money is not good. The money. I said, Jerry, I've do told it. you, forget about this money, money thing. Come and do this thing. And so I came and that was it. That was my first time hosting a president. And then voila. Charlie, did you go back to tell Reverend Hedwig Quist that Charlie, oh, you're so home. I, 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 right, I right now, I owe an offering. I owe an, a big offering. <laughs> a big offering. <laughs> good evening to you, Hedwig. And, and, and we appreciate you for, exactly. for, for that moment. You know, the, yeah. and that brings me to my next question. People who speak into your life exactly. at a crucial mm -hmm. point, sometimes even with you objecting, exactly. which you look back later and say, Charlie, but if I hadn't listened to this person's advice, sure. Sure. I would have missed it. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about angels. I call them yeah, angels, sure. mentors, people mm -hmm. sent to speak into your life and how big those are at crucial moments. Let's talk about that. Hmm. Four readily come to mind. The first, Nashiri Drisu. Mm, Nash. The man who General discovered Nash. oh 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 Nash, I should be standing and you know speaking his name. Nash discovered my talent when I was working under him at you know uh, Star Life, my first employment. I would I wouldn't say I was the best worker though. I wasn't the best employee. I I I, I gave him so much wahala, but I would do my work all the same. But Nash just believed I could be more. For, for no strange reason, every day at meetings, one-on-one, -on -one, when I'm driving with him, he says, no, Jerry, you can, you can do more. You, I mean, you are sitting on very big potential. And so he, every chance he gets, he'll push me. My first gig that I did at Star Life, it was Nash who made a case for me before management that, oh, let's not hire an MC. Let's use Jerry. And he came and told me that, listen, Jerry, you are doing this thing, whether you like it or not. I hadn't done any of this thing that. He says, this is what you need to do. This is what you need. And Nash himself, if you give Nash a mic, eh, Nash is not MC material. But Nash gave me all the guidelines. And really, he had worked. Nash is that kind of person who is a people builder. He may not necessarily be good in the thing he's teaching, but he would bring you. And you are the better for it. Praise God. So everywhere this gospel of mine is preached, Nashiru comes up top. I mean, he comes up number one. Wow. Yeah. Number two, the second person who really made an impression on me, Mrs. Magna Treba, Comrade Mo's sister. Mm. I mean, this is a woman who saw me and my potential because of the love I have for Komla and, you know, I shared my aspirations with her. And she said, that young man, there's something special about you. You may not have noticed it yet. You have a very unique presentation. If you could really hone it, you could actually live on this. You could actually set up and live on this. She sold that idea of full-time corporate MC a year before I even ventured out. And I thought, that, oh, this is not something I'm ready for right now. But when the time came and I approached her, she walked me through. And still, I mean, every time she gets the chance, she gives me, you know, advice upon advice. The third and the fourth, you know them. The man, the myth, and the legend sitting before me. 
<laughs> and his ever loving wife, you know. I mean, you are that kind of couple, or let me say you are the, those kind of people, you will not directly say yes or no. Do it or don't do it. But you will flesh out all the options. And Rev, you've never ceased, you've never ceased to put me on the straight and narrow. You know, even when sometimes I'm a little intransigent, as the, you make your case and just leave me to go. When I hit the wall, I come back. You know, and I mean, I mean, I, I, I can't, I can't thank you enough for the deposit that you've made in my life. I'm the better for it. The platforms you've given me, the pieces of advice, the follow-ups, every time, I'm great. I'm still smiling. I, I, I know the last two people, but I want Is to it? thank. <laughs> I want to thank Nash, <laughs> Nash and Moena, two people yeah. that are very, yeah. very, very dear to my heart because for reasons that mm -hmm. you will not believe it. I've known Nash okay. and worked with Nash, mm -hmm. and I was there when he gave you that first opportunity, I and know. I remember it too well. And, and Moena has also been a yeah. very, very, very good person to me yeah. and was very, very key in helping us at the early times oh, of Springboard. Okay. Yeah. So I know both of them very well and I can attest to what you're saying. But isn't it amazing that you sit here, look back and see these people have been yeah. of great help to me? Sure. Um, can there be anyone, um, um, Jerry, who can say that they are self-made? that they, they have nobody who has invested in their lives? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. You know, the, wh why that comes up is pride and deliberate forgetfulness, if I may. Deliberate, I mean, it's a selective amnesia, for want of a better word. If everybody looks back over their lives, they will see that there's that one person or there are those people, you know, who have, in very little ways, you know, and most of the time, it's those people who make those little contributions. They are the ones who stand out. Those who do the very big ones, most of the time, they are not even the ones. Maybe they do it for a reward. They do it for a certain recognition or something. But those people who make those small deposits over time, they are the real heroes. And for me, until we start acknowledging that there are people who have been on that journey with us and have made such contributions with us, we will not get anywhere. I, I, I interact with many young people who say, listen, I need a helper, mm -hmm. I, need, I need somebody to invest in me, and there is nobody. Is there a role that the mentee, yeah. the receiver, is there a certain positioning that they need to be able to get the help? Because surely you can't be the exactly. only one who attracts so much help. Exactly. What do you think people must do to get more of such angels, mentors, investors in their lives? Attitude. Very important. Attitude. Rev, you remember those times? I would do an event and I would send you a WhatsApp message. I did this, you know, this and that and that. And that. It's about that attitude. And for me, the attitude of perseverance is key. You know, and most people don't persevere. Most young people, they just hit a brick wall and that's it. They feel that, oh, that that's all. But even aside the attitude of perseverance, the attitude where you just have to be off, for want of better descriptions, good behavior a lot of young people are so entitled i don't know for whatever reason you know so they come to you and it's as if yeah you must help and when you don't then well they, they change their you know body language they change their whole attitude towards you they feel that oh you, you are, you're negative you are this and that but i feel no if you have identified something in somebody and you want him to be your mentor you must make a good case for yourself you must, number one, show perseverance that, yes, this is what I want, I will push. But while doing that, you must show a good attitude. Four things you need to get a mentor in your life. You need to first have the right attitude. Mm. You need perseverance. Yes. You, you need to avoid being entitled. And you need to make a good case. Exactly. Don't assume it will come to you. No. These are the prescriptions of Jerry Edem Ajololo. To anyone seeking to find those mentors, those angels, those people sent by God to push you on your journey and help you to get to your destination. This is Springboard, your virtual university. Today we are in the engine room with my friend and my brother trying to understand the joys, the fears of venturing into a career area that is unusual and believing against all hope that you can break through there and live in that space. And we are finding out what the four key requirements are, four plus one key requirements are. We also find out what about those moments when nobody calls you? What do you mm. do? And, and, and let's find the balance so you don't think it's all rosy and it's exactly. all nice. And this is brought to you by the Springboard Ratio Foundation and proudly sponsored by MTN Pulse, the enterprise group UMB Bank with media support from 
the multimedia group and the graphic business. Let me remind you that on Tuesday on page 18, the graphic business, this whole story fully captured so you can wow. share with your friends, read it over and over again and be inspired as you proceed on that journey. Also to mention my friends from the Central University, Ghana's premier private university. Talking about UMBR 50, let me remind you that all great countries are built on the back of entrepreneurs who step out, take risks, and build thriving corporate ventures. And Springboard has, over the past 15 years, been at the forefront of, of exciting Ghana's young people about building business. And that's why our partnership with UMB is very important in bringing to you a bank that has done this for, guess what, the past 50 years since 1972. And they are challenging Ghanaian business people to rise to the very top heights of our economy. Reach out to UMB at this time and they will help you build a company that is at the very forefront in everything that you do. UMB bringing a uniquely Ghanaian perspective to banking since the year 1972. Let's go for a brief break. When we come back, let's go into those uncertain moments, the, the battles and also the highest heights of pursuing your dream and finding the right pulse points with Jelly Adam Ajalulu. Please don't go away. At Central University, we are not just giving theoretical knowledge, but also real life practical imagining. Our projects and research are targeted at solving real life problems within our built and natural environment. My name is J. Joseph Balfour, an architecture student. The faculty and facilities available to us make us industry ready. The project I'm working on recently won an award when my colleagues and I visited the Netherlands. Central University makes you industry ready. was a man who had it all. He had skill. He had charisma. He was loved by all. But above all, he knew the importance of helping others, lifting others up. He knew the importance of giving other people an advantage so that they too would use that advantage to help others. All you need is that advantage that sets you apart from the rest. And when you discover that advantage, life's challenges don't seem so daunting anymore. That's where we come in. Enterprise, your advantage. UMB was established in 1972 as the premier bank for the corporate and private sector in Ghana. From our very beginning, as the only Ghanaian bank serving all categories of businesses, we set a standard for excellence and innovation. Over the past 45 years, we've built a financially healthy and strong bank, demonstrated our commitment to our customers and to growing businesses, and exhibited originality and innovation at every turn. At UMB, our focus is built around people, service, products and technology. These are the key to our present success and our future triumphs. At UMB, we are poised to make a difference not only with our customers, but also in the banking industry. We invite you to share in our future. 
Our future starts now with you. Welcome back to Springboard a Virtual University with my friend and my brother, Jerry Edem Ajalulu, the, the number one corporate MC, helping me to understand the joys, the fears, and the, and the skill sets that you require to operate in that field. And if you are a note taker like me, he's spoken about income security, spoken about growing up, spoken about corporate MC skills, sure. spoken about his turning points, including mm. the tomato factory. Of course. Spoken <laughs> about angels, yeah. where Nash and, and Maureen are featured prominently with, with support from Comfort and I. Then he's talked about the fact that there is no one who's self-made. Yeah. You see, anyone who believes that they are self-made is either proud oh, yeah. or suffering from selective amnesia. amnesia. It's totally sure. too powerful. Ah. And then he said that in, in order to attract mentorship, you need to, ha one, have the right attitude. Yeah, okay. Two, you need perseverance. Mm -hmm. Three, you don't need to feel entitled. And four, you must make a kiss. Sure. And a good kiss on that. Case, yeah. Let's go on to value. Okay. I woke up to the reality one day that if somebody doesn't value what you do, don't blame them. Educate them. Mm -hmm. Why does somebody need a professional MC? Hmm. Why can't they just give the mic to somebody and say, Charlie, Fayanko? Okay. What does a, a trained or corporate MC professional MC bring to an event? Help me to understand. A professional MC is your insurance for the success of your event. He can make or make. The first thing a professional MC does is to ensure that there's order and a smooth flow. That's the first KPI. If that is established, every other thing is established. But anybody at all with a good sense of, you know, uh, direction can do that. For me, a professional MC adds value. What is value? Number one, if you are representing any client, you must know the client. And you must know why the client is having that event. What the client seeks to achieve with that event. What the client wants to educate or pass on to their audience. Who are their audience? What are their expectations also? A good MC will do his research and know the various points to articulate on behalf of his client. I'll give you a typical example. On the 31st of um, March, where we're currently in May, uh, today's first May, I did an event. The president uh, commissioned um, Japan Motors, the assembly plant. In going through my materials, you know, the research and all that, I got to know that they had already commissioned a plant in 19, um, I think it was 62, or no, it was, uh, 62 or 63. So this is just a phase two. So, I mean, back in the day, Ghana had so many assembly plants, Coase Motors was doing, VW, other, you know, but the wave of industrialization was curtailed. Now the President of the Republic has resuscitated it or resurrected it, and most of these investors are coming in. I got the daily graphic that captured that story. You're joking. I'm serious. And the managing, the first managing director who gave a speech, his speech was captioned in the graphic. I was able to zoom out and take out portions of his speech. In the times we're living in, trust me, every investor comes to Ghana because of certain things they see. Chief amongst them is faith and confidence in the system. You will not believe it. As far back as 1962, the old man, the MD, first MD, the highlight of his speech was, we do this because of the faith and confidence we have in Ghana to make it our second home. Now, I listened to all the speeches that flowed. I mean, you know, from you know, the CEO and to the president, to the minister for trade, and even the president's speech. And while ending it, you see, the thing about our job is that you do a lot of research, but you are like a boxer. You wait for the right. You wait for the right and land the punch. The president celebrated his birthday, um, I think, a, 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 a day before, two days before the event, yes. So I did my research, quickly went to the grandson of the man and found out that the man was alive. He says, yeah, he's alive, he's sitting at the back there. He wasn't even seated on stage, but 
he told me that, oh, yesterday was his birthday. So a day after the president's birthday. So in ending the whole program, I said, Mr. President, I'd like to thank you for this and that and that and that and that. But it would be remiss of me to end this program without paying glowing tribute to the first managing director of, you know, Japan Motors, who coincidentally spoke or gave this, this at the first, this and that and that and that and who celebrates 84 years to, you know, I mean, you know, yes, everybody says, wow. And so I said, and so as a fitting tribute to him, may I read an extract from his speech? 16 I, years ago. And I read that portion of the speech. Everybody, I mean, it just, it just landed, it was the safe landing. And when we finished, look, everybody said, look, I mean, you are just, you, 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 it was just you, you had to do this. And so for me, what I'm trying to say is that the MC, a professional MC, acts like a boxer. You need to know where to deliver essential punches. Very, not jokes, not you. No, 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 no. Those are byproducts. But you are there as a communicator, not a talkative. So you must know the right things to say. Sometimes also, it's not in the things you say, but little actions, interventions. You can do behind the scenes stuff. So the president's lectern maybe has to be positioned. What do you do for that intervening period? Quickly, you connect with the police band or anything to just do an interlude, to make everything seamless. So for me, I cannot, you know, enumerate enough the, the, the value that a professional MC really brings to bear. But I believe that it, most people understand the fact that the professional MC is your, 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 your insurance to a successful event. Our job will be done. What you have done in this past these past few minutes is, is make a case not just for yourself but for your whole industry exactly. because you got me leaning forward and saying oh no don't tell me don't tell me don't tell me and you landed a punch <laughs> as somebody who bought race events exactly. i can relate so exactly. much to how that little mm -hmm. edge mm -hmm. that you may not even see as exactly. anything sure. stands you out from the competition but let me go on to competition in the face of competition because it's a very competitive industry there's so many others playing the ball and playing very very well improving every day exactly how do you keep your head up and this is not just for being mc but mm -hmm. but in everything that you do that is highly competitive exactly. how do you keep a step ahead of the competition number one i acknowledge my strengths and my weaknesses what are your strengths very very important my unique strengths or strength is in my presentation the way I look, the way I talk, the way I carry myself about is unique. Everybody has this. Now, what does it do for me? It opens doors for me. I know the right doors that it opens for me. Acknowledging my strength helps me not to look into other people's strengths mm. and not to unnecessarily burden myself with, you know, doing things which would, which would make me look like another person. So that's one thing I do. Number two, continuous development. I have a routine. I make sure that at least every day I get to know what's in the dailies. I read something related to my work. Most people don't know. The key to my success has been largely reading tons of speeches. Somebody was saying about MC, what have you got? I am there to present people who give speeches. So the audience listen to speeches. Every day, I need to know what my clients are saying to their constituents, to the audience. If I'm able to distill that, it makes my work very easy. So I will not say the same thing that my client is saying. In my line of work, when you hear somebody saying, as the MC said, as the MC said, more than once, it means you are talking too much. So I try and know the things that are of particular interest to them. Leave them to make their submission. The things they leave out, then I trumpet. That is one way I've held myself, you know, in this game and it has helped me. Number three, I mean, aside the, aside the uh, knowing your strengths, aside also um, uh, continuous, development. continuous development. Number three, in terms of pricing, I am modest in my pricing. An honest wage for an honest job done. There are certain key indicators I use when pricing. Number one, 
the caliber of the event, those who are coming, the venue, you know, a few things would influence the current price. So there's no one price for all events. I try and, you know, make a case for the client to understand that this would warrant X, Y, and Z. So with that, we negotiate. If it's agreeable, we move on. If it's not, respectfully, you decline and move on. Do you walk away sometimes? Oh, a lot of times. A lot of times. A lot of times. And How a lot does it get interpreted? Well, I, 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 I don't know. But for me, it's about value. When you let the client know that X, Y, and Z are the reasons why I cannot do this for you. If only you could meet me halfway, I'll do it. It's, I mean, you know, you gain the client's respect. You think it's fair? It's fair. Do you, do you find that you sometimes have to be defending a whole line of work because, and I use the word ignorance respectfully, sure. people are not aware of what it entails and therefore think it's just talking. Do you find that you sometimes are, are like a defender of your industry? Sometimes. Yes, sometimes. But it hasn't been my, you know, uh, case because I've been lucky or blessed to have had my kind of clients appreciating what I do. So lately, a lot of people call and say, oh, Jerry, we have this event. Uh, the president is coming, this and that, and that. And I say, oh, I don't work for the president. Like I say in my head, Abba, you're calling me. I don't work for State Protocol or the president. But because they've seen continuously that, oh, okay, you deliver X, Y, and Z for these clients, so you are favorably disposed toward, you know, this. Is it, is it, a, is it a brand thing? It's a brand thing. So, so would it be fair to see that you've positioned yourself saying that people who are looking for a certain kind of MC exactly. will come for you? Exactly, exactly. And by the same token, would you then see that for some kind of events, they shouldn't call you? They would not, they would certainly not call me. Hey, and there was should, a, should someone, I ask you which time you <laughs> So somebody, somebody says, no, I mean, you should be doing the, the pageants, the music awards. And I said, look, not the way it's done in Ghana. I cannot stand on that stage for one minute. People say, oh, you're worrying this guy. I remember when I started initially, I, mean, I was doing weddings and stuff like that. And somebody would just pull me on the side and say, a young man, what do you do? I said, oh, I'm into insurance. I said, ah, it shows, it shows, it shows. It shows the way you're presenting this. There's that corporate this thing around you, you know. So clearly, from the, from the word go, I knew my place you know so there are certain platforms that i'm not at my best and i'm i'm very honest when people call me and they say oh jerry we want you to i say oh this it's one not your it's not my 40 exactly a celebrity had his uh, 40th no 35th birthday a few years ago and then somebody called me a very close friend called me and said oh this i said oh i beg you because of the kind of people who are coming I cannot, I mean, seriously, I, I will not fit. I mean, I'll make a, a mockery of myself, but I can recommend X, Y, and Z, you know. Let's stay on that point for, for understanding brands. Yeah. I mean, somebody say, Charlie, I hustle, we are hustling. So uh, how do you say no to something that there is money in? Uh, help people to understand what you are telling me, because I, I get the sense I of what you are you. seeing very clearly. You are seeing you. that... By saying no to some things, you concentrate on some things, and exactly. therefore your value in that space is established, exactly. your skill sets match it, sure. and therefore you get paid more. But sure. somebody saying, no, 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 but the door you are saying you are not opening, mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. do you know the money that is there? I know. Uh, what would you say to that? A shirt size 15 can be regular. It can be slim fit, and it can be fitted, but it's still shirt size 15. Although you wear size 15, it doesn't mean that you can wear regular, you can wear slim fit, and you can wear fitted. Sometimes I've seen, and most of the time, I've seen that in order to do the job for which you have been well, you know, placed to do, you just need to focus on where you do it and do it best. It looks like you're losing money because you're foregoing something, but in, in as much as you do the one that you're best suited for well and do it, I mean, very well, a market grows in that area. So for me, you don't really lose. I mean, in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the beginning, it looks like a loss, but in the long run, you would make, you know, serious. Let's talk about tragedy, setbacks, and mm -hmm. failure. Because one of the things that is repeatedly coming up in the engine room is that people look up to you and they say, ah, great, that's, that's the life I want to live. Exactly. But to be fair to those people, they also need to know that no matter how high you have climbed, exactly. there are challenges, there are fears, mm -hmm. there are failures, there are tragedies. Tell me, have you experienced setbacks? Have you felt 
like giving up? Have you seen, have you seen your back touch the ground, as they say, in a restless language? <laughs> Which I from that. <laughs> I've been blessed. I've been, I've been so blessed. You know, mine has been a very smooth journey. A few, a few challenges. You remember, I had one program, and I felt that ah, the event, the person who had called me for the event, hadn't treated me well. I mean, you know, he was, he had taken over his own show, and I said, ah, so if you didn't need me, why did you call me? I took to social media, I was very, and you called me. And you made a point that, look, what have I lost? It's the person's show. He decided that he would take his own thing. I mean, just leave him to, you know. So that was one. The second was at a big program in 2018. It was an Africa Innovation Prize Award. It was in July, during our fasting period. I'd done an event in the morning in Tema, and I'd run around, done a lot of meetings. I didn't even drink water the whole day. And I came to the venue in the evening for the program. I was co emceeing with a South African lady. And I mean, everything was okay. And then I went on stage. The president came. The anthem, you know, went out. Everybody sat down. I started welcoming everybody because I was the, you know, first to. So I started welcoming everybody. And then all of a sudden, I started seeing men like trees. My goodness. I felt an upwelling with, I nearly threw up on stage. And before I could, I just vanished from the stage. I said, no, not You're here. You're joking. I'm serious. Live. It was live on Facebook around the world. Quickly, the lady just took over. And I mean, that's it. It was embarrassing. Did you I come was, back? Oh, so I was backstage. Stay for to go try to, you know, resuscitate me, make me this and that. I drank some water, this and that and that. And then she was going on. I mean, she had introduced the first part. She was calling the nominees from the various countries. I was backstage. I said, no. Do I go back? And if I go back, do I apologize? Or I should just... There's something seized me and says, young man, just do what you have to do. Rev, you believe it. I got my things together went back on stage the next country to call and from the federal republic of nigeria please welcome olumide so, ah. <laughs> and so it was like it was most of what what, what just happened here like seriously <laughs> and, and, and and i carried on till the end honestly when i left there i thought that was the end no seriously because this kind of disgrace you won't believe it two ministers of state called me the next morning Many people called me. Is everything all right? Yofi Grant, GIPC. I did a program, I think, two days after, and then I went to him. I said, Jerry, you know yourself. What, what happened? This and that. Everybody showed interest because there was a track record. They know that, ah, on a good day, you are not afraid of the crowd. You are not. But something deliberately went wrong, you know. So, I mean, that's one challenge I'll never forget. One challenge I will seriously not forget. You know, you know what I like about this story? You no. Know, the last point you ended on, because you're a good storyteller, I must say. As we were narrating the story, I was just, I was just imagining the occasion, the stage, thinking of the color of what you're wearing, thinking of the lady from South Africa, everything. And I was just caught up in the story. So what happened next? Mm -hmm. Did people commend you? Because I remember exactly. a program I went to that had Derek Prince speaking. Mm -hmm. And the fun above is here. It was a, it was a uh, apostolic church okay. in, the, in the Jamestown area. The hand got torn above his head and was coming down to his head. Come and see the political people running and so on. The old man was so calm. When they got there, they said, Chief, go push it. So he shifted and then they, they held the fan. The fan just came off in the hand because there was no, the, the string was torn. The fan was rotating and coming towards his head, just above his head. The moment they moved the fan away, believe me, I mean, if it was me, the devil is a liar. I mean, what are you talking about? <laughs> he did not even comment. comment. He continued with, from the Republic of Nigeria, <laughs> Olumide. I mean, that was just Sickness. like that. And we all started clapping. Wow. So, so you are saying that instead of going back to reference what had happened, mm -hmm. your judgment at the time was just good. Listen. And it had a good impact on your very, audience. Very, very. But the note on which you ended was for me the game changer. You okay. said the track record exactly. was good. So yeah. people cut you slack. They exactly. were like, oh, that is not mm -hmm. you. And mm -hmm. for that reason, exactly. you were forgiving us in a way. Wow. Very, very humbling experience. I mean, I'll never forget that day. I, 28th I, July, I remember. You know, I, 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 I think last week I spoke to Bella Mundi uh, mm -hmm. on the same show, and she was talking about the fact that she froze 
when she got to the Q&A segment on the, on the beauty pageant. She said the last, she had done so, so well in her speech, Charlie. Wow. The last Q&A, you see the team flow out. You see weak, and then she was asked the question afterwards, who's an African? And Charlie, she couldn't answer it because still she couldn't get over the Q&A. Just to bring home the fact that people who are doing so well have also had mm -hmm. setbacks. Mm -hmm. What would be a message to somebody who's still mulling about one setback that they didn't get right and and holding their head and still remembering after two years that that day when I I missed it. What would be your message to them? Bounce back. Mm. Mm. There is nothing like a comeback. You know, in my line of work, everybody wishes you well when you're on stage. Because left to most people, Kai, the ground will open for them to enter, then for them to stand in front of people and talk. So from the word go, when you start, everybody just, oh, they, they like you and they wish you well. When something goes wrong, you just have to be humble. And if it's your fault, apologize. If it's not your fault, to just you know, carry on with grace. But a lot of people, I don't know, maybe for a want of a better expression, just feel a little entitled, not in the usual sense of the word, but entitled that, no, I'm not, I'm not supposed to end up like this. Failure is not my portion. I mean, I must, you know. But failure is a way, or challenges are a way of bringing another perspective. In my line of work, I record everything I see. So every program I record, just to know the things I said that I shouldn't have said. The things I said that I should have said better. And the things that I should have said that I didn't say at all. So do you review your work? Every day. Every day. On my, I mean, I, I, I'm just coming from a program this morning, you know. I, while, while driving, I was listening to, and my wife always says, ah, don't you get tired of listening to yourself? I say, well, that, that's my job, you know. So for me, anybody who has suffered any setback, please look on your track record, at least for, 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 for some assurance. Then just bounce back. You will make it better. And move on with grace. Oh, yes. Move on just with grace. My final question would be your word of encouragement to anyone charting a path that is unfamiliar. It's so dear to my heart because in my, my days in first degree Legon, sure. in the late 89, 90, thereabouts, nobody will come out of university and say they want to become MC. Nobody will say they are building a delivery company. Sure. Some have built food supply chain companies. Some are delivering literature. Mm. People are doing stuff today that did not exist. Yeah. People are doing amazing stuff on social media. Some people are influencers. Mm -hmm. I mean, some of the jobs that are interesting these days did not even exist when exactly. I was in university or when I finished school. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that if anyone came to me to say that's what we're going to do, I'll say, explain it again. What do you say you're going to do? But now it's not funny anymore. Exactly. It's not strange anymore. Mm -hmm. And so, listening today are parents whose children are trying to venture into something they, they've not done before, people who are themselves contemplating careers in areas that are unfamiliar, sure. and people who have ventured out and are wondering whether they made, they made a mistake. Mm -hmm. What would be your closing thoughts to people who are exploring career paths that are unfamiliar, or people whose loved ones are exploring and they are wondering whether they are safe? What would be your word to them? Number one, move. You will not die. Just move. It's not life and death. Move. After you've moved, understand what you've moved into. Understand the business. Understand what really it's about. Number three, put together a structure. Very important. Number four, acknowledge your source. Number five, improve every day. Make a deliberate plan to improve every day. For me, the chief thing is the source. You must know your source. If you're a spiritual person, you know where your source is. If you're not a spiritual person too, you know where your source is. Never underestimate the power of your source. With the source comes inspiration, with the source comes passion, with the, uh, with the source comes longevity, and every other thing, very important. Five things that you want to know if you're exploring new territory. First, move. You will not die. Two, understand the business you are in. Three, put together a structure. Four, acknowledge your source. And five, improve every day. These are the thoughts of Jerry Adam, Ajololo, my MC. And it's just amazing how he's unpacked the story of his life and found time to also encourage those charting new paths and wondering whether they are 
on the right track. Let me give you a summary of the lessons, 12 lessons from Jerry that I would like you to keep your eyes on as you bring this interview to a close. First about income security, he says he stepped out into an area that was unfamiliar with a bit of trepidation, but also some comfort that, listen, the worst case is that it would not work and he could come back because he had the skills and the education in those spaces anyway. But the good thing is that he had people close to him encouraging him to venture out and, and have faith, including his father, his wife, and others around him. Number two is about growing up. He said, quite regular child, nothing to give an inkling about what he was doing until a testimony he gave at church at the age of nine, and that brought a number of gifts after which he began to do a bit of advocacy. He became a pocket lawyer of sorts, <laughs> and then one thing led to another till he became an MC. Third one is about the skills you need to become a corporate MC. He didn't talk about eloquence. Though. Number one, brevity. Number two, humility. Number three, respect. And number four, an insatiable appetite to learn. And above all, that build a portfolio, a docket for every event you have and store the filler in it. That's the only way in which you can go back 60 years and go and bring a speech from 1962. The next one was a turning point in his life. And he mentioned the December 2022 MTN Carol's Night and then went back to mention the June 2015 tomato factory launch. And I must tell you that you mimicked Stan Dovey very, very well. I mean, I have known Stan for years, and it's exactly how Stan, he, he's just so passionate about what he does and intolerant of, of I, error. I say every leader needs a Stan Dovey. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Stan one, one who can be the leader's mind and execute flawlessly. Yeah, very interesting, very interesting, very interesting description. But then the fifth was about angels. You mentioned my yeah. good brother, Nashiri yeah. Drisu, uh, for discovering your potential. Sure. Marina Trevor for urging you to go into this full time. And you, of course, you found space to mention Comfort and I as good friends of yours. Then the sixth point is the fact that you said there's no one who is self-made. Anyone who sees themselves as the beginning and the end of their success story either is proud or suffering from selective amnesia. Tell you, somebody will give you a knock. Hey, you could get into trouble for this. The seventh one is about mentorship. If you need a mentor, mm -hmm. have the right attitude. Exactly. Be, have perseverance. Don't feel entitled. Mm -hmm. And very importantly, make a case, a good case. The eighth point is about why you need a professional MC. You said that is insurance. What, what else would you say? You are an insurance. Yeah, insurance. <laughs> you say that's it. your insurance of that you, you have a good flow. Of know the client, mm -hmm. know the audience, yeah. know the, ex, the mutual yeah. expectations and the expected end mm -hmm. of the program. Exactly. And you give a beautiful illustration of your Japan Motors exactly. launch mm -hmm. in 2022, yeah. and your reference to the launch in 1962, yeah. and the speech, and acknowledging the person who was there, and even knowing the birthday next to the president, which I don't want to do all. I still think it's a, a, a sucker punch in, in, in boxing. <laughs> the ninth one was about competition. You yeah. said, to compete well, know your strengths, mm -hmm. and you, you think yours is the unique way you carry yourself. You talked about continuous development, yeah. and the fact that you read every single day, the dailies, sure. and then something about your field. And I think that was quite interesting. He talked about modesty and pricing as well. The tenth one is about branding and position. You say you have to say no to some things, to say yes to some things, and become the authority exactly. in the things you say yes in. That was huge. Uh, number 11 is about setbacks. You give your own story of the day you literally passed out on stage, and you say even if you mess up, your track record will exactly. speak for you. And just bounce back and carry on with grace. Understand that every failure helps you to understand a different part of yourself. Your twelfth is for exploring new territories. And you say, move. You will not die. That's number one. Number two, understand the business. Number three, put together a structure. Number four, acknowledge your source. And number five, improve every day. Jerry, speak directly to God and tell him something in 30 seconds. That's assignment for you. Tell God something. He's watching you and saying, ah, me back. What are you doing? Dear God, I come to you this evening as you've instructed us in Matthew 5, 16, that we should let our light shine before men, that they may see our good works and praise you who art in heaven. I ask for grace. I ask for strength. As I do that which you've given me to do with all my might, because in the end, there is no knowledge, there is no device, there is no wisdom and there's nothing else in that grief where I'll eventually end up. I ask all this through your Son and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, It was like ending one of your shoes.
Tell you, do, you know what? It's been a beautiful conversation with you, Jerry Edem Ajololo. And I'm sure somebody just listening to this, if you didn't even hear the Japan Moto story, just the conclusion alone, your next event, you know who to call Jerry Edem Ajololo. My name is Albert Okran. On behalf of Team Springboard and our sponsors, MTN Pulse, the Enterprise Group, UMB Bank, and our media partners, the Multimedia Group, and the Graphic Business and our, our new partner, Central University, saying a big thank you to you, Jerry Ajolo, for being with us today. Always a pleasure. And to everyone of you for listening out there, please don't forget, on Tuesday on page 18, just get the graphic business newspaper and read this whole story again with the 12 points you've articulated. And on social media, join the debate. Which one is your favorite? I know my favorite, and by far, I won't tell you. Let's talk on social media about which one is your favorite and let's have that debate we always have every Sunday and whenever we gather on your virtual university. Meanwhile, my name is Albert Okran saying God bless you, God bless you, and God bless you.